Hey everyone, uh, my name is Minga, or Rick, or Crack Me If You Can on Twitter, uh, and so I am here to give a talk uh, at the uh, Password Kraken Village uh, on, uh, sort of on the, not, not really the research, but on the, um, the what we have just uh, sort of observed by cracking passwords for places that have uh, password policy at 12 or greater. Uh, so essentially, I am a password cracker. That is my job. I'm uh, also a penetration tester at CoreLogic. Uh, I started Crack Me If You Can uh, coming up 10 years ago now, and so we still run that. Um, the you know, if you look at the old hash catter John the Ripper rules called you know the CoreLogic rules or whatever, that was something I published 10 years ago, and it's now embarrassing or whatever. Uh, when I'm not doing Crack Me If You Can, I'm usually on Team Hashcat for other password cracking contests. So that's that. So jumping right in. Uh, so in 2015, I gave a talk and it's on YouTube and it was called, you know, what would fix passwords? Uh, some weekly password audits, pretty graphs to prove it. And it was a haiku and no one thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. But so essentially to, to spend just a few minutes wrapping it up because it's important on what we're going to talk about today. So uh, essentially in the 2015, we talked about weekly password audits. Okay. And so this is like kind of what I do for a living. All right, and so we have enterprises and we audit their passwords every week and give them reports or it's every month or it's a few times a year or whatever it is. So, uh, uh, you know, essentially the way it works is we, you know, we put a, a, a machine in their environment, full disk encrypted, it's all locked down. It dumps the NTDS, it dumps the active directory, like the directory, the raw file. Uh, it's, you know, it's encrypted again. Um, and then smaller subsets of that, like the password hashes uh, and, and some of the other informations, will then leave the corporate environment and go to our environment. Um, from there, we send off just the hashes to our GPU machines. Uh, and so we don't use cloud machines. Everything's owned by us. Uh, and we have a whole bunch of them all working all at once. And uh, that's how we do it. And then we deliver a report. Uh, so... A key thing is the, the fact that we are actually grabbing the raw ntds.dit, and so that gives us, uh, a, it's the entire database for Active Directory, and so it's, it, it gives you the last login times, it gives you the password age, and everything, uh, the last time a password's been changed, it tells you what groups a person's in, and we're going to use that information, and I'll show you sort of how we use that information, because we'll, we're going to use that as a metric to see what's changed over time. So, uh, and then the reports, because we have the full Active Directory database, we can, um, you know, we can, we know the policy for the passwords, and so we can report on any violations. So, that's kind of the gist, and we're giving, an, this is an update to that because we found something new, because we had been doing these weekly audits for years, and then all of a sudden, overnight, something happened, and that something was our crack percentage started dropping. And then the next week, it dropped more. And then the next week, it dropped more. So we're like in a panic saying, oh, man, there's something wrong with our software. Something's happened. Uh, what's going on? You know, are we extracting the hashes just right? And it turns out they rolled out a new password policy for all their users. And it was 12 characters as opposed to the normal, you know, eight characters with the upper lower special digit. Or you got to have three of a four and everything. So what I want to show you is, I want to show you, so we started in 2015, and now it's 2020. I want to show you graphs from 2017, okay? So in the graph below, so these are, um, and I'll shrink it so you can see it. So recovered users' passwords. So you can see, so down here at the bottom, this is 2015, and you can see when we very first started, we were about 80% cracked, which is average. That is average, if not a little better than average. Okay, and you can see there were about 3,200 accounts. And then over time, as we go to the right here, I actually can't see my screen over here, uh, but you can see it, it, you know, it, it mostly stays the same. I gotta scroll back, I'm sorry. Okay, there's a little dip there. So these are the first two years. And the reason why you're not seeing their crack percentage go down is because they weren't requiring their users. They weren't telling their users your passwords are being cracked, okay? They weren't doing that. They were just doing it for statistics, okay? Uh, and we'll, we'll get into that. So I wanted, so you see it's, it's fairly flat. Well, now here's the graph from 2015 on the left to now. 
I'm gonna make it so I can see it. Right, so here is now, and so what's the crack rate at now? It's at 50%. So they've gone from 80% cracked to 50% cracked, okay? And so uh, the amount of cracks is down to about 2100 or something along those lines. So what changed, okay? Well, we talked about they went 12 character minimum. We knew about that, but something else changed where they started telling their users. They started, you know, telling their users about, you know, uh, about their crack rate and, hey, you need to fix this. And then additionally, administrators, all administrators had to have uncrackable passwords by policy. Okay. So this is the effort it makes, or this is the difference. Right. So uh, we were talking about uh, the percentage of change over time of the users, but we also need to talk about the administrative users. So this graph here shows the changes between 2015 when we started and 2000 and the end of 2017. So this was before major policy went into effect, but you can see the crack percentage goes, sorry, from 2000 and, and um, the crack percentage goes from about 75% crack ratio, I mean, down to single digits, down to, you know, down to maybe 10%. So this was essentially what the first few years were. It was fixing administrative passwords. Okay, so the regular users, not too much in, in the way of things were changing, but their main drive was lowering. So just in, you know, just in about two and a half years, they were able to get the administrative down to uh, single digits. Okay, so, uh, so now we go from 2015 to now. Okay, and so this is a five year gap you're looking at here. And you can see on the far right there, I mean, we're... There are weeks where we crack no administrator passwords, okay? Because what they do is they actually, if an administrator's password is cracked, that user is emailed automatically by them and said, hey, your password needs to be changed, okay? Now, they, they, once they have an uncracked password, it can stay that way for 100 days, but it has to get to the uncrackable state, okay? Uh, and so, I mean, it's to the point now where, I mean, I'm constantly just trying to get one crack for administrative passwords. It's that hard. So this is pretty interesting, um, and it makes perfect sense. So this is a graph between 2015 and 2020 of policy violations. Notice how there are no policy violations until the middle of 2019, okay? So when we were talking about how they were 75% cracked, those were perfectly valid passwords. There were no policy violations. There were no seven character passwords or anything along those lines. But all of a sudden, right here in the middle of 2019, all of a sudden there's 550 policy violations. And that happened overnight because they put in the password violation, you know, saying, nope, the new policy is 12 characters. And so you can see everyone got their thing saying your password doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't fit policy and then improved, improved, improved. And so now they're floating around 80% violations. Now, it looks bad because they have all these more violations of password policy. But now they know exactly which accounts have passwords that aren't 12 characters. And that was something they did not know before. Uh, and now they know. So all this whole area and this is the whole thing about password policy and you know i've done a lot of bunch of talks about those is they don't make better passwords they don't okay so that's uh you know that's pretty interesting so on password age so this is a graph from 2015 all the way to now so five years of password age and you can see when they started they had accounts with passwords that were 300 days old they had no idea Okay, it was just up to the user like, oh, well, domain policy says they have to change their passwords. So surely no one has a password that's 300 days old. Well, what about, you know, consultants who didn't log in or system accounts that were created and then passwords were never changed. So once they started tracking this and we started reporting on it, you can see how the improvement, like it goes down to, oh, the average age is 200 and then go, it kind of goes back up and then it be, right at the end of 2017, they really kicked it into high gear. And now, I mean, their average password age is always at 100. Well, take a guess at what their requirement is for password age. You know, it's 100, obviously, because it shows you. And so they've actually had this under control for two and a half years now, uh, the average password age. So kind of going along with that, what's the average password length? 
And this is actually the minimal password length because it it's an average based off the total amount of accounts. So even when we started in 2015, the average length was almost 10 characters, which, which sounds great. It sounds amazing. I mean, it sounds like, oh, oh, they must have totally uncrackable passwords if the average length is almost 10. Well, you can see that's not the truth. And then right here in the middle of 2019, you can see the password length, the average shot up because they set it to 12. And then over time, everyone had to change their password to meet 12. Now, there is a slow incline, very slow and average password length over a period of four years, but it's not even, you know, it doesn't even, it increases from 10 to 10 and a half or something like that. So that's it for the pretty graphs. So the next thing I want to kind of go into is the, uh, the topologies or the patterns of passwords. Right, so... Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the patterns and topologies we've seen because uh, I've done another talk uh, around the, uh, the software package called Pathwell about uh, you know topologies and patterns of passwords and these are the kind of things like with dash a3 and hashcat you would use. So in 2017, so right in the middle of this five-year window that we're talking about, these were the most common pathologies here. And so you can see, you know, the first line, the most common one, it's 1.36 of all passwords cracked is just six letter word, two numbers. So you can see it's length eight. It's got three of, core, uh, three of four categories. It's got upper, lower, and digit. And so, and then you can kind of go on down the list. And so, you know, 1.36%, 1.26. And you can see for the most part, these are just words capitalized with numbers at the end or words capitalized with numbers and specials. So this is totally what we, what we see in every enterprise ever. So what was interesting was, well, what about in 2020? So after this policy has gone into effect where now you have to have 12 character passwords and now you have to have all four character classes. You need upper, lower, special, and digit. So it's, it's sort of a mixed bag because you start looking at it. So the most popular one with 2% of the cracks is just a word followed by four numbers and a special, you know, and, and in this case, uh, for the four numbers, we put the year, the current year and the special, the most common special of a password is always exclamation point. So now it's 2% of the cracks, but remember, or maybe I haven't said, we have a thousand less cracks than we used to in the data. And so now it's 2% of cracks, but it's less cracks. But you can see the top six masks are longer. But for the most part, it's just a long word, number special. A long word, four numbers special. And so as you go down, this is not, this is not rocket scientist stuff. In other words, I mean, this is pretty cut and dry, okay? The passwords got longer, but for the most part, all they're doing is adding a special or, or, and they're at, they're choosing longer words. So like they used to, you know, for their word would have love, love 2017, you know, and now they're like, oh, I need a 12 character password. So they're choosing California, you know, just a longer word. So we, we know as password crackers that, I mean, it doesn't matter what the word they use. What matters is the changes they make to those. So you start looking at this and it, there's not really too much to see. Now, the good thing is that these topologies, okay, so these, these are really common. These are co so common that I published a list of the top 100 most popular topologies. And for a corporate enterprise, they almost always work, okay? They're universal because I've been, I've been password cracking professionally for however many years it's been, and that's what it's based off of. Well now, so their topologies are different. They're not, all of them, or you know, the top 100 or whatever, are not in the top 100 that we see everywhere else. So that is good, it is good. So like if you were to come in, you were gonna crack this domain, and you were like, oh, well I've got these 100 patterns that I'm gonna use, they won't work. I mean they will, but not quite as well. So that is good, so you, they did diversify the field some. OK, um, but like in 2015, those top 100 A3 patterns or topologies, what are you know, upper, lower, 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 lower? 
it would have cracked 75% of these passwords. Just without even thinking, you could hit enter and you'd crack 75% and that's how easy. But if you notice the rules, when the rules come along and say, oh, capitalize, add two numbers, capitalize, add a number, add a special. These rules that, that we have to create or use in order to target this place's passwords, they're, they're, they haven't changed that much. It's the same old rules we've seen for years and years and years. It's the same general idea. But for the most part, they're using longer words and longer numbers. That's it. That's it. And so that kind of makes it say, hey, wait a minute. They went to 12-character password policy. That's great. They must have really lowered their crack ratio and everyone's using random passwords and everything. And, and the answer is kind of like, well, no, it's not. Now, there obviously there's a thousand passwords out of 3,300 or whatever it is that I don't know anymore. And so those users must be doing something that's not this. But there's still 2,000 and something users that are just using the standard rules that we're kind of used to seeing. Um, and so it's sort of, uh, you know, good news, that get bad news there. We've actually started removing some of the shorter words from our word list, specifically for this client. I mean, three-letter words, four-letter words, I mean, they, they could still occur for people that are adding, you know, eight numbers at the end of a password. And that's fine. I mean, we have attacks that target specifically that, but we're also speeding things up by removing the, um, some of the shorter words. Okay, so we've talked about uh, common topologies and patterns, but what about, you know, and I mentioned the certain word lists and words, uh, you know, so what are the common strings uh, that we see a lot in passwords at this particular place? So this is a really common trend that we see uh, testing the place over and over and over again, is that there's certain strings, there's certain common words that are just used in mass. So uh, in this particular case, I want to show you sort of the before and the after. So originally, 2.64% 2 of the people use the client's name and their password. And then in 2020, of the 2,000 or so passwords we still were able to crack, the client name is still in there, 2%. Now, you know, so that's sort of, that's not great. Uh, but it's, it sort of holds true. Now, notice seasons that a good 2% of the users use seasons. Now, why, you know, we all know why people use seasons, because you're forced to change passwords. Supposedly, the seasons change every three months, things like that. So, but now, it's a good 600 and, you know, or 6.66% of the cracked passwords have seasons names in them. You know, and we're already doing that. We already have a list of seasons as our word list. Um, but, you know, why are there more? Well, because the really smart people have changed their password and I've crack I can't crack them. But also seasons are long words. I mean, they're six letter words. You know, uh, you, you know, you got summer. That's a good example of one. Uh, then you go down to months that used to be months were 1% and now it's 1.46%. Well, why more? Because months are long words that are easy to remember. Now, the years, it was 0.5% of people that used years the time when we first started, but now it's up to 8.65%. So why is that? Because they're forcing them to use, to make long passwords, and they're forcing them to use numbers. And so, you know, people are choosing the years over and over again. There's nothing that, that tells them they can't do that. So, you know, picking a word and putting the current year at the end is perfectly acceptable, okay? So, this is all bad because here we are, we, they've improved their password policy, but all these common strings that we see everywhere are, ju are, are, are just, they're right there, okay? And so this, you know, the likelihood that someone's password is spring 2020 exclamation point is pretty high, okay? Now, and we can't have that because it, of password spraying. I'm going to pick a single password and I'm going to try it against every one of your users, you know, and you federate your domain, so I'm going to attack Microsoft's server, and you'll never see it, okay? So, in order to prevent these password spraying attacks, well, you know, we need to blacklist common passwords. Well, what are your common passwords? Do you even know? You know, no, because you're not auditing your passwords, okay? Um, you know, intrusion detections and network intrusion detection, that's not new, okay? That's an old idea, yeah, 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 but 
what else can we do? You know, learn what your passwords are doing, what your users are doing. God, uh, you know, what are their common strengths? Audit your damn passwords. Is it that hard? Okay, you have to learn in order to learn what they're doing in order to block it. Okay, and then train your users. Now, everyone has password training where they show them tricks and things like that. I have never seen password training that specifically is targeted toward a certain subset of users saying, You all are using the company name too much, quit it, or you all are using the years too much, and here's the data to prove it, quit it. Because if you do so, you'll make a much bigger impact. Train them how to make uncrackable passwords, and but use real data. And so show them essentially what I'm showing this. And then just flat out block months, years, seasons, and whatever your client name is, whatever your company name is, just block it. Out of box, I guarantee you 10%, 15%, 20% of your users, that's, what, that's how they're creating their passwords. Okay, so the next section is takeaways. Right, so uh, some of the takeaways. So, like I said previously, there's a thousand passwords that we essentially no longer know, okay? They don't fit under normal passwords that we're used to attacking. You know, we've tried brute forcing, we've tried A3 patterns, topologies, even the ones, you know, that are 12 or 13 characters, standard word list and rules attacks, you know, all these things. So there is a big positive here. They went to 12 characters and out of it, they got a thousand passwords that they, that we cannot crack. I mean, we can, we get a new ones every week. Um, but it does raise the question, you know, what do those 1000 passwords look like? And that is essentially what crack me if you can is in the year 2020. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. So but some, some of the other takeaways are there's no major rule changes from now to 2015 at this particular client, you know, to get 50% cracked, 50% cracked in the year 2020. There's no major rule changes. The standard human nature aspect of I'm going to capitalize, I'm going to add special characters at the end, you know, mostly the same stuff works, okay? It is the same stuff that would get you almost 80% cracked five years ago, now get you 50% cracked. Your, any sort of uh, uh, pattern-based attacks, your A3s, you know, obviously you need to change those to meet policy. If you don't, then you're, you're wasting time. At this point, if I brute force eight character passwords, I'm just flat out wasting time because I know that there's only 80 passwords that violate policy, and I've already brute forced all them. You, you need longer words, okay? So, you know... It, most of the words in my word list, I mean, obviously there's, there's tons of them and there's some that have been collected from all over, but, you know, we're, I'm seeing more and more where people are using 12, 13 character words that might be rare, but they're coming into providence because people need longer passwords. Um, the idea of adding numbers and specials to the end of a password, I mean, we've always had that, but you may need to increase your rules. So, you know, I'll run, oh, add four numbers and a special to every word. Oh, I always do that. And add five numbers. Okay, well, and then you get ones where it's like append six numbers and a special. But that starts to take a while. I mean, we're, we're dealing with NTLMs, but it still starts to take a while, especially if you have bigger word lists and things along those lines. But in this instance, there are people that still want to use their six-character word like their kid's name or Austin or Boston, you know, the city where they live or whatever, and they just want to change the numbers at the end. So you need to start incorporating those rules that apply more numbers at the end and the beginning and the middle and everything like that. So, uh, and, you know, in general, obviously you need more rules. Uh, uh, I guess I just said that. Okay, so something that is interesting is users even after you've implemented this policy where you know now we need 12 characters instead of eight whatever like that users are still rotating their passwords like crazy so like this is an example that was it was based off real but i changed it uh and so this is a city somewhere you know or a town or something and so oldest long time ago this was their password it was the pl name of a place a special and then two digits Every time they change their password over time, you can see for the longest time they were just changing that, that, that two-digit number. Well, now it's a three-digit number. 
okay? See, because now it's up to policy. Let's see, is it three, six, nine, twelve? Okay, yeah, so now it's up to policy for them, okay? So even though you have people creating longer passwords, it does not make them smarter, and then it also doesn't prevent them from shooting themselves in the foot. So if you go back and you see this password from you know multiple years ago, well, you could just start increasing that 27 to 28, 29, and then eventually you would get to 216. Uh, and so longer passwords don't make your users less stupid, okay? Now, there's other ways that they're doing it, and this is really common, where we had all these users, and, and you would see their password week by week, and then all of a sudden, they're forced to do 12 characters. They just add stuff to the end, so they'll keep the same password. Some of the administrators would choose their eight-character eight password and then just type it twice, and they'd be like, how'd you crack my password? It's 16 characters. There's no way you can crack that. And the answer was, you just doubled an old one, and you changed a four to a five, and you typed it twice, okay? And that's not even, I mean, the rules you have now, it probably, as long as you feed it in your previous cracks, it would probably crack that every time, okay? And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. But, you know, s simple A6, A7 rules where you pin stuff at the end or you prepend stuff at the beginning, as long as you use your previous cracks over and over and over again, you'll continue to crack these. But be aware that this is user behavior and... and if you're, you know, blue team, you should be aware that your users are doing this and yell at them, okay? And so that's what this place did was they actually were like, hey, we had multiple instances where administrators were like, hey, how'd you crack that password? You didn't crack my password. You cheated. And so then they came to us and then we went back and said, you typed your, your same password from a month ago. You typed it twice. And the person was all defensive or whatever and, you know, accused us of cheating. So, okay, so... Does the existence or do, do forcing users to do longer passwords, does it mean you don't need password changes? Because that's the whole thing that's going on right now. If they're saying, oh, well, if people use 16 character passwords, then you don't need to force them and change your password. Cha forcing users to change your password is a bad idea. And I'm like, I don't, mm, uh, I don't know about that. Now, those 1,000 users of this particular place that had passwords I couldn't crack, fine, they don't have to change their passwords after 100 days. They can go longer. That's fine. And the whole reason I can say that is because I know that I can't crack their passwords, you know, in a reasonable amount of time. So, but the problem is if you just blindly say that without facts to back it up or specific instances, it's, it's, I, I, I think that's not a good assumption. I don't think that's a great idea. So, you know, and so you know, enforcing logic, longer passwords doesn't make miracles. It's not magically going to happen where, you know, your users go, oh, I should use a random password, okay? So, um, and this kind of, this, this section here kind of shows you an example where if you have a user and they have a pattern in their mind and they think no one's looking, then even if you increase the length or the complexity, like, they're going to keep using the password. So if you say length eight, they're going to do some 2020. Okay, well, you have to do a special. Then I'm going to do summer zero exclamation point. And then 10 digit. Fine, I'll put the year. Okay. And they're just going to keep changing it. You make it 16 character length and require two of each category. Fine. Summer, summer, 20, exclamation point, exclamation point. If they're in the habit of doing that, of constantly, you know, putting the seasons or whatever like that, it doesn't matter what length you do, they're going to do the same dumb thing over and over and over again until you do something about it. And if you're a password cracker, take advantage of this. You know, 10 years ago, we had a whole, in Crack Me If You Can, it was all these seasons. Well, guess what? That stuff still holds true until a place goes and blacklists all the seasons and it's gone. Okay? So... You, you know, if you're trying to protect your environment from these things, understand your users are doing this. Your users are using the same pattern regardless of length. No, not my users. Yes, your users. Okay? And crackers, take advantage of that. So, kind of closing up from the recommendation side of things. You know, should you increase your password length to 12 or 15? Yes. Even though I'm bad-mouthing it. I'm still saying that in this place where there's 3,200 users, 1,000 of them now have uncracked passwords. 
So I'm saying, oh, these idiot users are doing the same thing over and over again. There's still a thousand of them, and that was a thousand people that were using crappy passwords before. So that is a, I mean, a third of the company. So yes, do it, okay? And then the next thing is audit your passwords. Why is this so hard? I do this for a living, and it seems like two-thirds of my job is convincing people that it's a good idea, okay? I don't get it. I, I'll, I'll, I can rant and rave about that all you want, okay? Well... Should I require all four character classes, upper, lower, special, digit? Yes, you should, okay? Now, unless you start getting tricky. So I know that there's some college out there, I forget which one, where they were like, okay, you know, we went, I forget what it was, 20 characters. And it said, okay, well, if you go 20 characters, then all we need is letters and specials, okay? And then they just told everyone, do sentences. Don't ever do a password. You're now doing passphrases. And that, that's just what they said. They said, you don't even have to change your password anymore if you do a passphrase. Okay? And they just went and did it. Now, they didn't require all four character classes because they figured out, like, hey, let's just tell people to do sentences. They're not going to do summer 2020 in a sentence. You know? And if they do, the sentence is going to have spaces in it, which is a special character. So... Um, that's an instance where they went against what I say and say, oh, you need all four character classes, but they did it in a smart way. Other places aren't doing it smart, okay? So train your users. Now, the thing is, every place, every enterprise changes, uh, trains their users. They, they train them, oh, you know, here's what a good password is, and here's what a bad password is, and things along those lines. They all do it. But how many of those places do it based on real cracks. They're real data so that they know their real tricks because you can give a generic lecture about password security and some person will be in the back just be like, ah, this doesn't apply to me. Well, what if you go and it applies to this person, you know? So uh, in a lot of my talks, you know, to, to like blue teamers and system administrators and stuff, I'm like, hey, force two uppercase letters, you know, or force three uppercase letters. Even that will throw people for a loop, and they can't do summer 2020. They'll be like, uh, which letters do I capitalize? The first three, you know? Well, on a side note, if you're a password cracker, that's a pain in the butt to crack if people start putting passwords in random places because we're used to capitalize that first letter or we're used to inverse the... Uh, the entire capitalization of the word, or lower the entire word, or upper the entire word, okay? Now, obviously, obviously, there's ways to do it where you can go and, you know, do every single capitalization, but for the most part, we don't do that for every try, okay? We do it some, but as soon as places start putting in two, requiring two uppers or three uppers, you're, you're throwing us for a loop, Okay? Uh, the, you know, recommendation, the other rec- I already said it was, you know, seasons, years, months, company names. Do it, okay? Now, the one thing I didn't talk about in this meeting was when I showed the percentage of how many users were using seasons and stuff like that, I left out a really big one. This place has a kind of a default password. It's kind of like the known password that, you know, Help Desk doesn't use it anymore, but it's like, oh, hey, I created the, your account on that system, and uh, it's using, you know, the password. And it's a, it's, a, it's a complex password that everybody knows. Well, when we started, 20% of the company used it, you know? And now, no one uses it, but there are big groups of people that took the old password, the old secret password that's known by throughout the company, and they added stuff at the end. Because they think no one's looking. So find out what these passwords are that are in use by tons and tons of people and tell them don't use it. Another recommendation, the admin complexities should be harder than the users. And that's what this place did, and it worked. Took them a while, you know, it should be, you know, make it be 15 characters. Make it it be three specials, or make it be three capitals. Even something that trivial will trick people up, okay? Now, you still need to audit, and you still need to confirm and crack their passwords and make sure they're not doing something stupid. We've had uh, other places where administrators are going into their account as admin and resetting their password back to the original one, uh, violating policy. We can see that in the history. You'll see 24 passwords in a row that are identical because they're going in and being like, well, I'm not changing my password, so you have no idea what's going on. 
Um, but it, you know, it definitely, and another big one, which is really hard to enforce. If you, if administrators have a regular account and an admin account, they can't be the same. Okay. So kind of wrapping up other ideas, you have to do something to break the habits of your user. So everyone's like length, we'll go 12 characters. That'll break their habit. And it does kind of, but not enough. And so that's why I'm saying, you know, require two capitals or require three capitals or anything to break human nature. OK, and you'll start to see other sites that do this and say, no, no, you uh, your special character is not in the first half or it's, uh, oh, you know, all your specials are at the end. You need to you need to disperse those. And you're starting to see that. Um, I, what this place did, and I highly recommend it, was public shaming of, of administrators. You know, here's an email to 20 administrators. These three people have passwords that, that were cracked this week. How many of those three, how many people you think changed their password so their name wasn't on that list again, okay? And then when it comes to users, you have to, you got to tell the CEO that their password stinks, okay? You got to tell the janitor that their password stinks. You have to audit and you have to do something about it. If you don't want to actively shame them, then you have to do something in policy that says, no, you can't use the city that the company's in. You know, and you start, you start essentially blocking those types of things. Uh, one of my favorite things to do as a password creator is to use a, a, a colon in a password. And I do that purely to annoy password, uh, password crackers. And in the contest a few years ago, I made a thousand plain texts that all had the, the colon in there and it drove people crazy. So that's it. Once again, my name's Minga. My name's Rick. Uh, crack me if you can on Twitter. I run the crack me if you can contest. Please check that out. It's the, you know, 10th year, the password cracking contest. Um, um, hope it was good. Uh, thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, and if you haven't noticed, I'm covered in sweat because uh, I'm in an RV at the beach right now. Uh, which is the best way to do DEF CON ever. Thanks a lot, everybody.